Hello and welcome! This is Andrew from Crocoblock, and today we'll be exploring the powerful search filter included with the JetSmart Filters plugin. Unlike other filter types such as Select or Checkboxes that scan the data using predefined filtering options, the search type allows inserting any text into the input field and checking if any of the target posts contain matching text. In this video, I'll show you how to create search filters and customize them using Elementor Page Builder. Before we dive into the tutorial, please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our team greatly appreciates your support. To showcase the search filters functionality, I'll be using a post listing created with the Jet Engine plugin. The posts in this listing include a title, image, textual part and several custom meta fields. Identifying these parts of the posts will be crucial when we set up our search fields. With JetSmart filters and Jet Engine plugins activated, go to the Administrators dashboard, hover over Smart filters and click Add New. Type a filter title in the top field and copy-paste the same title in the Filter label and Active Filter label fields. Let's call it Default Search Filter. In the Filter Type drop-down menu, Find the search option to reveal two more fields. The placeholder text explains the purpose of the search bar and it will be visible before users start typing. The search bar field defines the source data for the search. It offers two types of searches that target different parts of posts to find matches for input text. For the first plugin we'll use the default WordPress search. After selecting this option, hit the Update button. Now let's create another filter and call it Smart Search Filter. Fill in the filter label fields, choose the search filter type and in the search bar field select by custom field from query variable. This selection introduces a new query setting. The type of search applied to the current filter connects the post's meta fields to the search bar, verifying whether the values of the queried fields contain the text typed by user. In the Query Settings section, insert the field keys you want to be queried. To obtain the field keys, open one of the post types that the filter will be used for. Scroll down to the list of post meta fields, copy the name of the field, go back to the filter settings and paste it into the query variable field. You can use multiple keys by separating them with commas. If you go to the JetSmart filters dashboard now, you'll see the two filters we just created. Above the list you may also notice a switch to new view button. Clicking that button changes how the filters dashboard looks, making it more comfortable for managing multiple filters as it allows sorting all options by date, type or data source. Additionally, you will see a slightly different interface when adding a new filter, with the order of filter settings rearranged. The crucial difference, however, is that when using a JetSmart filters searching engine here, you will see the dynamic text button next to the query variable field. Using this button allows you to pull sets of meta fields created by different plugins, such as the Jet Engine's Taxonomy Builder. Let's now go to the Elementor page with the post listing and apply our filters to search through it. On my web page, I have posts displayed using Jet Engine's Listing Grid widget. In the widget search bar, type Search Filter. This is a filter widget that becomes available after the JetSmart Filters plugin is activated. Drag that filter and drop it on the post listing and it will appear in the top part of the container that holds the listing widget. The content section of the search widget settings is where we choose which filter to use and define its basic settings. In the select filter field, start typing the name of one of the created filters. Select it. In the next field, choose a plugin that provides a widget that the filter will connect to. Since we're using Jet Engine's listing grid, click Jet Engine. The apply type defines when and how the filtering is applied. The Ajax option 
means that the result will appear after clicking the search button without reloading the page. AJAX on typing means the results will show up after users type a certain amount of characters without reloading the page and will get a field to define how many characters will be needed to start the search. Page reload means the entire page will reload after the search button is clicked. And the final mixed option allows searching with the search button without reloading the page but with the renewed URL, so it will be copied and used to reinstate the exact same search results. If you're choosing an option that requires users to click a button for searching, you will also see several additional settings for modifying the button's appearance. You can change the button's label, select and add an icon to it, or hide it, so the search will happen after users put in characters and hit the Enter key. The Show Filter Label toggle will make the filter label visible, providing you have previously used an option for creating a filter label. The next field is called Query ID. This is where you can type the custom ID of the listing widget that should be connected with the filter. If you only have one listing on a web page, don't bother filling in this field. But if you have two or more listing widgets, you may find that the filter is acting inadequately. Let me illustrate how to use the query ID now. I will add another listing grid about the existing one and populate it with another post listing I have already created. The posts in the new listing also have a meta field targeted by our filter and some of their values coincide with field values of the post in the original listing. Let's check the page on the front end and see how the filter functions now. I will type a field value that some of the posts of both types have and hit the search button. Now both listings display only posts with matching field values from the first listing. Because we didn't assign a specific widget, the filter searches only posts from the listing that appears on the page first. Let's go to the backend and solve this situation by assigning query IDs. Go to the advanced settings of both listing widgets and in the layout section type an original ID in the CSS ID field. Now go to the search widget section and insert one of the listing widgets IDs in the query ID field. If you type the same text in the search field on the front end now, you will see filtering taking place only in the listing that is connected with the search widget by using unique IDs. But what if you want to filter content in both widgets using a single filter? We cannot just use the same CSS IDs for listings because the filtering engine will work as if there were no query IDs used and will target the first listing grid on the page while sending search results to both listings. In that case, we should use the next and final option in the search widget content settings, which is activated by the additional providers enabled toggle. After clicking it, hit the add item button and choose the plugin that provides the widget that you want to add to search sources and the unique ID of that widget. Let's adjust these settings according to the data we used for creating that additional listing widget and proceed to the front end of the page. Use the same input as we did the last time. Voila, the filtering happens in both listings simultaneously. Back to the search filter widget, there are style and advanced settings left. The style settings allow modifying the appearance of every widget's detail such as the search bar and button size and position, borders styling, typography options for the input text and so on. The advanced settings are similar to those of other Elementor widgets and control the entire widget's appearance. For example, here you can choose the search bar background, motion entrance animation, position within the container, responsive visibility settings and more.
I will now go back to the content settings and switch between the two filters we've created to showcase the difference in how default WordPress search engine and the JetSmart filters plugin perform. First, I'll select default search filter in the select filter field and check the web page on the front end. I've already mentioned that when choosing a default WordPress search for creating the filter, there were no options offered for choosing the data source. And in this case, it will search only for titles, content and media alt text. For example, I have a selection of posts about books here. If I conduct a search using a book title, the filter will provide me with the right results, because the book's titles are used for post titles. But what if I want to search for a book by author's name? The default search engine looking through titles, content and alt text shows results if it finds any matches. When I try to find all books written by Charles Dickens, the default filter only pulls two out of three books that are in the current list, because it matches the text I type to the content of two posts. The third one that's missing doesn't have the author's name in the content, only in the custom meta field, so it wasn't shown in the search results. Let me go back and switch to the filter that I called Smart Search Filter. If you remember, it is connected with multiple custom meta fields assigned to posts in this listing. These meta fields hold information about the book's titles, authors, years when they were published, where they were published and short descriptions. So now when I type the author's name, I'm sure to see all posts that have the value I typed in relative meta field. The same works for other meta fields I mentioned. I can also type descriptive words about the books and see if their descriptions contain those words. So what is the difference between using the default WordPress search and the one provided by the JetSmart filters plugin? The first option only searches through the essential parts of the post. JetSmart filters allow searching through post meta fields which provides more ways to find what you look for. The meta fields can contain the same information as the post title and content and much more, which may be not visible on the front end but only used for searching. There's one more detail I should mention to better understand how the JetSmart filter search works and what it can be used for. If I try to find a certain post by inputting values from two different meta fields, I will get no results, because the search will only target posts that have a single meta field containing everything that's in the search bar. However, I can create multiple search filters connected to different meta fields. In this example, I made three additional filters with labels that hint at how you can search through the listing. This way it's possible to mix and match different values to find precisely the item you need and also to learn about what's in the listing quickly. This functionality is similar to the Select by Category filter, but allows typing the value instead of finding it in the drop-down list. That is all about the search filter functionality provided by the JetSmart Filters plugin, a simple and convenient tool. If you found this tutorial helpful and want more insightful tips, stay tuned by subscribing to our YouTube channel. See you next time!